Hey, what's up, YouTube? And welcome back to all my cloud scholars out there. My name is Kieran Tross, and I want to thank you for clicking on this video. In today's video series, we're going to be talking about data lifecycle management within Microsoft Purview. So when I first started mocking this video up, my plan was to give you a video to show about retention labels as well as retention policies. But as I was going through it, I said to myself, there are different components that fall within these two different areas. And I wanted to make sure that when you set up your retention labels and your policies that you did it successfully. So this is one of the reasons why I made this two part video series. So the first thing we're going to be going into is learning about adaptive scopes. Now, adaptive scopes is the ability to uh, have an agile approach to managing and doing data protection. So you're giving the right people the right access and then also having some queries there to back you up just in case things get moved around within your organization. Then we're going to go in and talk a little bit about retention labels. Then we're going to talk a little bit about retention policies as well. And then plus, in the second part of this video series, we're going to go and talk about records management uh, disposition reviews. So disposition reviews is what you would have at the end of your data lifecycle management if you want to continue to manage that data or keep that data in your organization, or if you want somebody to go ahead and delete it. That was what the uh, role of a disposition review would be. And I'll talk a little bit that, about that more in depth in the second video. All right, so now we knocked out the introductions. There's nothing else to do but to do it. So let's scroll up our screen sleeves and let's head over to the Microsoft Purview portal. Okay, so we are now in front of the Microsoft Purview uh, page. What I'm going to do is, um, if hopefully you all are used to the new Purview portal, um, you know, Microsoft's always changing the way it looks. So if you are looking at this video, it is a good chance it may change a little bit, but for the most part, they keep the foundation the same. So what we're going to do is we're going to go over here to settings. And then once we get to settings, we're going to go to roles and scopes, and then we're going to go to adaptive scope. So one of the first things I want to do is I kind of want to talk a little bit about adaptive scopes to get you a better understanding of how powerful this tool is. And it would make a lot more sense once we get to a point of doing retention labels and retention policies. But let's just jump over here to adaptive scopes. So uh, when you first get in here, um, this is the page, you just type in adaptive scopes and you go to and type in purview, you'll get this information. So let's kind of go through this documentation together. It says when you create a communication compliance policy or a policy for retention, you can add an adaptive scope for your policy. A single policy can have one or, or many adaptive scopes. And this is one of the reasons why I wanted to talk about this because when you get to policies for retention, you might say, okay, what does that mean? And you have a better understanding of how you can apply these policies and also shorten down your administrative time. So what it says here is an adaptive scope uses a query that you specify so you can define the membership of users or groups included in that query. These dynamic queries run daily against the attributes or properties that you specify for the selected scope. You can use one or more adaptive scopes with a single policy. That is very powerful. Instead of having like 8, 10, 15, 20 policies, you can have one policy and it could be doing a whole lot of different things and pulling in the right users or the right SharePoint sites based on the scope of your query. So down there in the example, it says you can assign different policy settings to users according to their department by using existing Microsoft Entre attributes without the administrative overhead or creating and maintaining groups for this purpose. So, you know, I just read basically what I said um, earlier. Um, so that's pretty good, right? Um, so there are certain advantages of using adaptive scopes. So um, no limits on the number of items per policy, although adaptive policies are still subject to the maximum number of policies per tenant uh, limitations, the more flexible configurations will likely result in far fewer policies, more powerful targeting for your policies. You also have query based scopes provide resilience against business changes that might not be reliably reflected in group memberships or external process processes that rely on cross department communication. Now, I worked uh, for a healthcare organization for a while, and I can tell you right now, there were times where, you know, the administrative overhead, where somebody moved from one department to another, it didn't always get logged in the right way. So if you have your adaptive scopes and you have certain attributes and you say, okay, uh, attribute of city, you know, of state, or if you have an attribute of department or whatever the case may be. Um, that will help you out in order for you to maintain your systems and apply the right retention policies 
uh, so that this way uh, you could keep in compliance in your organization. So it says, how adaptive scopes work with Microsoft Onshore administrative units? So you can use adaptive scopes with uh, administrative units. If you don't want to know administrative units are, they're basically a way to tie down your environment and allow only certain individuals to have management over a certain area. So for instance, if I had a New York uh, office and I had a uh, Atlanta office and a, a Los Angeles office, I can now apply administrative unit that this way my staff, let's say help desk, can only be able to manage users in certain areas, right? So that's your way of saying, okay, you know, um, I want them only to have these rights and I'm breaking down the workload for my uh, staff. So I wanna go a little bit further down because I really wanna get into um, this area, right? Maximum Maximums for adaptive policy scopes. Says there's no limit to the number of adaptive policy scopes that you add to a policy, but there are some maximum limits for the query that defines each adaptive scopes. So for instance, a string length for attributes or property values is 200. Number of attributes or properties without a group or within a group is 10. The number of groups is 10. Number of characters in an advanced query is 10,000. And in grouping attributes or properties within a group isn't supported. Right, and then here you, you get the areas where you can apply adaptive scope. So let's jump back into the purview page. And what I wanna do is I wanna create our first adaptive scope together. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go over here and I'm click create a scope. And I'm gonna call this scope um, executive, I'm gonna say data protection. And I'll say executive team, All right, So. Anybody in the executive team, I want to apply a certain policy. I want to make sure that we are keeping their stuff, I don't know, seven years or whatever the case may be. But I want to make sure I'm having this scoped out that this way uh, Purview says, okay, I'm going to look for these individuals with this attribute. So in the description, you can put whatever you want. We're not going to do anything there for this one. Over here is where we have our admin unit. So if you wanted to assign an admin unit, you can. We're not going to go ahead and do that for this. Uh, tutorial and then also over here is where we're talking about the different areas right so each type of scope uses different attributes or properties to match the users sites or groups so if you wanted to do it to SharePoint sites that are have certain information and you're like we need to make sure you can do it to SharePoint sites you can do a 365 group I'm gonna go with the users and here we are going to create our, 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 um, our query, right? So over here, you have the advanced query. Uh, over here, you can add an attribute as well. So I'm gonna hit down here, and the first attribute I'm looking for is department. And it's equal to, and I'm gonna say executive team, right? That's our department. But I can add more attributes, right? So let's say if I say um, and or, right? So I can say and, department or I can say city, right? And I say equals to NYC. I can add another attribute if I wanted to. I put an or and I can say another attribute. And look, we have custom attributes depending on your organization if you want to do it that way. You can say email address, you can say uh, street address, office. So let's just say you have your office names and you have people there. You can throw that in there as well. So you can really build this out. I'm going to uh, cancel this one out because I think we're fine with executive team and the city is NYC and I'm going to click next and there it says review and then uh, finish and then I'm going to click submit okay so great so it says your scope was created um, it could take up to three days for the queries to fully populate so the changes aren't immediate. Factor in this delay by waiting a few days before you add a new created scope to a policy. So it does take a little bit of time. Um, we, we are able to wrap that up. See, adaptive scopes aren't really, it's not difficult to do. Um, Microsoft makes it really easy for you. But it's really the powerful when you start adding on different things, right? So let's keep in mind what this article said up here is that adaptive scopes, right, can be used when you create uh, com uh, communication compliance policies or policies for retention. So I wanted to knock this video out. I uh, wanted to make sure I created this video because when we get to the policies um, and creating those, I wanna make sure that you understand exactly um, what I'm talking about. Yeah, so please continue watching this series. 
Um, what I would say to you is if you haven't done so already, please smash that like and subscribe button. Uh, here at Cloud Scholars, my goal is to get you from scholar to consultant and, of course, consultant to expert. Thank you and see you next time.